Hello and welcome to Producer's Notes number 8 for DCS Wireshark. In this note we'll be taking a look at the data link system. Now the data link allows us to direct wingman to navigation points. We can receive targeting information from the data link from wingman and we can use the data link to send targeting commands to our uh, flight elements. Now the data link uses the radio to uh, transmit the data and we'll get that going first uh, with these two switches here and we'll enable the power between the uh, data link and the navigation computer. Uh, below that we have a couple switches here. Uh, the first one is used to set your uh, own ID number. Now in a single player it's always going to be one because you're always the flight lead. Uh, but in multiplayer though you can have up to four aircraft in your flight all sharing data link inf information but each member of that flight needs to have a unique ID number being one through four and you can just uh, rotate the switch around uh, to select which one you want. Um, and the switch here allows you to determine uh, how you send and receive information within the uh, data link flight. You generally want to have it either in wingman, which will allow you to communicate to anyone in the flight, or in the um, commander mode, which only allows you to communicate with aircraft one uh, being the flight lead. I will keep the way it is for now. Now the first thing we'll take a look at is how you can use the PVI-800 navigation system to send a navigation point over the data link to your wingman. So as we discussed earlier, uh, we can store up to 10 uh, target points. Uh, so we'll select target point 1. And when we do that, we have a flashing blue box with the 1 in the center uh, right here. And what we want to do is we're going to send wingman 2 to fly it fly to that location and hover there until we um, order him to do something else. So we got that set. Now we'll go up to the uh, data link panel and in the middle row here we have a button for each of the four flight uh, members and plus an all command as well. Um, but for now I'll go ahead and I'll select number two and I'll send that. So I sent the information and now you see that the box has stopped blinking. Uh, I'll go ahead and send the radio command now. So I'll go to my uh, radio, wingman 2, go to data link point. And you'll see now he's off to fly to that point. Now, while he's doing that, uh, we'll go ahead and use wingman 3 off to my right and display the um, uh, reconnaissance function. So to do that, we'll go ahead and bring out the radio, wingman 3, reconnaissance. Now with the window here, we have a choice of uh, 1 to 10 kilometers in which the wingman will fly in the direction of, that we're oriented and will detect targets and then data link the position of those targets back to us and display those on the ABRIS map display. Uh, and also we have the option of having to go to a point and perform reconnaissance there as well. Uh, but for now, we'll go ahead and set that to three clicks. And now he's off, and um, also you notice it has some labels out there. That's just to help kind of orient ourselves uh, to see what's going on in the outside world. And uh, here on the display, we can see number two, uh, with the two in the middle of the circle. Uh, with the vector line, and we see number three ahead of us. First target is detected. We have a message on the ECRAN, a uh, flashing vehicle symbol, and the flashing unit symbol indicating new data. Second target looks like an air defense vehicle. <laughs> yep, and looks like one more uh, vehicle target uh, at the top there. Now, so it sounds like uh, two reached its destination. You should be holding there. And now three is going to be rejoining to us. 
Now we have the, uh, the data sent to us, now we can go ahead and put it into system memory. So we have the four icons on here on the top, uh, ground vehicle, air defense vehicle, uh, other, and uh, ingress point, which we'll talk about later. So we have a uh, ground target detected uh, vehicle from Wingman 3, and we'll put that in memory. We have an air defense vehicle sighted by Wingman 3 in the memory, and then a second ground vehicle from number three in the memory. Now let's see, uh, here on the Avers, we have all three displayed on the map. Now you notice that we have actually two different ground vehicles selected, so let's see how we can select those. First I'll go ahead and put myself back into uh, map mode. Now if we go ahead and click on the vehicle, you'll see the, uh, the first one is blinking here at the top. If we hit the button a second time, we'll cycle to the second one. Now, if I wish, I can also go ahead and remove him by hitting the clear button. Now, it looks like uh, both wings are joined up. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, plan an attack on this target area. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set ingress points on the other side of this detection area around the target array. And I'll be doing uh, that with the shawl. So I'll activate the shawl. And I'm going to find a location just outside that detection range. This spot, designate it, and hit the ingress point in the memory. And we see we have ingress point one at the edge here. Now I'll go ahead and I'll do another one on the other side. 